Welcome into the Cheely Law Review. My name is Ben Burnett. My guest today is Bob Cheely. Bob, how are you? I am lovely. How are you? Better than I deserve. Bob, I want to talk to you about the characteristics of a medical malpractice case. In your experience, what have you found as you as clients come to you and explore this in that environment? I've found that uh, most cases, by far and away, the, the cases that people think they may have a medical malpractice claim, they don't. It's not because they don't feel like they were not cared for properly by a hospital or a doctor, but it's because they don't, uh, you're not able to check the boxes. There's three boxes you need to check. One of them is, was there a breach of the standard of care by the medical provider, such as hospital staff, nurses, or a doctor? And basically, breach of standard of care is, the standard of care is what is recognized within the medical profession generally in that particular field as being an acceptable level of medical service and whether or not the care in that particular instance was met that standard or fell below that standard. So it's an issue you have to have experts lined up to to testify about, or you can, ideally, you can have the testimony of of a treating physician, a a subsequent treating physician, and that's the best because uh, It's harder for the defendant, whether it's a hospital or a doctor and their lawyers, to challenge the opinion of a treating physician who is trying to take care of the client who was the victim of medical malpractice. But it's easier for them to attack a a paid expert in that field. For obvious reasons. For obvious reasons. As you look at expert witnesses that are non-treating physicians they clearly, as you alluded to, don't have the same level of credibility with the jury because everybody knows that they're being paid to testify. Is that the only hurdle that you find with them, or are there other issues that you try to poke holes when a defense lawyer calls an expert witness? When I am cross-examining a defense expert witness or when I'm preparing my own expert witness for a deposition or for testimony at trial, I want to make sure that there's no soft underbelly that our case has that can be penetrated by the defense. And so I I spend a lot of time preparing my experts, whether they are a treating physician expert or whether they are someone that I have to hire and have them come in to render an opinion. It really does boil down to these factors. Number one, is that expert or doctor whether it's a treating physician or a paid expert witness. Is that person credible? Do they have the necessary training and expertise and uh, familiarity with the issues involved in the case? So that's the biggest factor is because at some point they, they're going to be challenged through something called a Daubert t- challenge where the defense, they're not an expert, that they don't know what they're talking about. They didn't follow the, the right customs and procedures Uh, to render an opinion in the case. And so every expert witness that you present is going to be challenged, and they're going to try to knock them out after they've rendered their opinions. So you've got to be very careful with who you choose. Make sure they're knowledgeable. Make sure they are well prepared for their deposition so that they don't get blindsided and uh, subject themselves to being stricken under a Daubert challenge. As you look, expert witnesses exist far beyond medical malpractice cases. You find them frequently in civil cases that you guys try in various in, in various courtrooms, correct? Oh yeah. We you know, we do a lot of uh cases against automakers. And so you have to have a an expert in uh those cases as well. Somebody that can talk about the defect in the vehicle that led to the uh enhanced injuries or deaths of the occupants of a vehicle or the way in which the vehicle performed. Yeah, you have to use experts in that field, and you also have to use experts in the field of tractor-trailer collisions. And, you know, someone typically you have to use as a, an accident reconstruction engineer. That is a term I hear a lot throughout the series that we have been recording. When you go look for expert witnesses, what makes the Chile Law Group different from your run-of-the-mill law firm? I think we distinguish ourselves 
by looking for experts where maybe other people have never looked for experts. For example, I always, in medical malpractice cases, I try to find a subsequent treating physician and use that person effectively. In automobile products liability cases, I've, I've uh, found recently retired engineers from major automakers to serve as expert witnesses. I like to find people who have not been just making a living out of testifying. They actually have another vocation. Yeah. Or did. Right. Do you find that they are more credible with the jury? Because I imagine it comes up, are you being paid to be here? Oh, yeah. They, it's definitely uh, more credible with the jury when this is a case that when they're asked, why did you take this case or why are you involved in this case? And it's a, if that expert or he or she is able to say that I did it because it's the right thing to do to help the plaintiff here, that's, that's the most effective kind of expert that you can hope for. And, but some, some experts, like in the, particularly in the automotive product liability field, there are defense experts that are part of companies that that's all they do is provide expert witnesses to the automakers. You, you're probably pretty quick to point that out, aren't you? Oh, yeah. And, and the tens of millions of dollars that their companies make, you know, being paid by the automakers. This has been another episode of the Chile Law Review. Make it a great day, everybody. Everybody.